Well, hello, video. Welcome back to the channel. I uh, decided to do a live stream today because uh, I'm going to stay home and look after my wife. And uh, also, it looks like it's going to rain today, too, you know, which is unusual. It's supposed to be the dry season, but kind of rainy. Yesterday, I was out swimming in the ocean. It was low tide. And normally, like, it's, you know, dead calm and uh, no undercurrent or anything. But there was this really strong undercurrent, like, pulling me down uh, towards the pier, which is to the north of us. So, kind of unusual. It's never the same out there. Every day, it's always different. But anyway, let's have an open forum today. Whatever you guys want to talk about, any questions you've got, especially if you're thinking about coming to the Philippines or you've been here for a while and you've got some comments about advice that you think other people could use, go ahead and put a comment in there and let's start the conversation. Sheldon, hello. Good morning. Nice to see you. So yeah, um, everything's good. No problems. Everything's going great right now. Um, just getting ready for the new arrival. So uh, got everything set. Just a matter of it could be any day now. So um, anyway, that's going to change everything. I'll probably, that's why I said I'm not going to be doing a, a lot of interviews outside of my house <clears throat> until the baby's born. Um, I just don't want to leave Jen alone. So once the baby comes and everything's all settled in, I'm going to start traveling around more and meeting people and doing interviews in other locations. But for now, I'm going to stay home. Oh, congrats. Thank you, MG. Appreciate it. Good morning. Any day now? Yeah, any day. Literally any day. Could be today even. <laughs> Could be any day. <clears throat> One of those things. I'll tell you something. Um, <clears throat> I have two daughters. And my first daughter, um, they induced labor. Like, uh, back this is over 30 years ago. They would say, the doctor would say, um, so when's your last time you interfered, whatever. And she would, he, he would decide when the baby was going to be born and like an appointment. Okay. You're going to come on, you know, August 34th, you know, come or August 24th, come down here to the hospital and you come down there and they put your wife on Pitocin, which is like a drug that induces labor. And so we did that, you know, we're naive. We don't know nothing. Had never had a kid before. Go down there. She's on, my wife's on uh, this Pitocin all day long, from like nine o'clock in the morning to like nine o'clock at night. Nothing happens. He says, okay, go home and come back in two weeks. Come back in two weeks, he puts her, puts her on her again. And uh, again, all day long, finally, you know, she's having a little bit of labor. He's literally taking his hands on my wife's stomach and pushing down really hard. I mean, really hard on her. Anyway, had the baby. Uh, turns out my daughter ended up being autistic. I'd done some research. When I had my radio show back in America, I interviewed a Harvard uh, professor who's the leading ex expert on autism. And he said that he has strong beliefs that this inducing labor in women is one of the reasons why cases of autism have skyrocketed in the developing world. And so I'm totally against inducing labor of any kind. So, you know, just not going to do that. My second child didn't induce labor at all, and she's the smartest kid in her class. So anyway, that's kind of off subject there, but whatever. Um, let's see. Art, park, and garden. Now that you're about to be a parent in the Philippines, will you buy a small place for the three of you? No, I won't. I'm a renter. Um, everybody's got their own opinions about that, but I like the flexibility. Um, it's an unstable world we live in now. It's a very unstable world. And the thing about the Philippines is that property is not liquid. It's not something you can just easily sell. I know lots of people have been trying to sell a house for years and they can't sell it. Um, it's just not liquid. And so I don't want to tie up my, you know, my resources, what little I have in a house. And then all of a sudden we have to leave the country or go someplace else for whatever reason. And you can't sell that house. So um, I like renting. Um, I'm lucky here. I've got a fantastic landlord and, uh, you know, takes really good care of us. Great, great price and everything. I can never afford to buy something like this. And so uh, for me, renting is the way to go. And there's loads of rentals here, too. So that's what I would do is just keep on renting. I don't believe in buying a house. You know, matter of fact, the biggest mistake I ever made in my whole life was buying a house. I put it off and put it off for years. I was working, uh, you know, on ships. And it was the peak of my career when I was making a lot of money. And my brother said, oh, you need to buy a house, buy a house. This is like in 2004. You know, buy a house, you know, and um, we'll look after it for you while you're out on the ship. And then you have a place I just divorced then. That your daughters could come, you know, stay with you and everything. So I bought this big house for half a million dollars. I sold my Apple stock to buy it. 
if I just kept on renting and kept my Apple stock, I'd be a multimillionaire today. So the biggest mistake ever. Then I ended up losing in a bankruptcy, you know, like 15 years later. So, uh, you know, bad mistake. I'd never buy a house. Um, let's see. <clears throat> now, of course, if I was like a multimillionaire and I could throw away, you know, a couple hundred grand on a house, that'd be a different story. But I still wouldn't buy one here. Uh, let's see. Good idea. You've got a seller place as it is. Uh, if a carrier could borrow moves in next door, renting gives you the option to move. Exactly right. I know and this has happened to many of my friends. I know people where the guy across the street all of a sudden bought a karaoke machine and every evening he goes out there around four o'clock and cranks it up full blast and just goes on until 11 o'clock at night, every single night. And before, you know, my friend that lived in that house was used to like to go outside and sit there on his porch in the evenings and enjoy the, you know, the weather and everything. And now, now he can't do that. So yeah, that happens. No concerns with China. Um, China's a failing state. I mean, if you watch Richard Zions, China's failing. Um, Duterte was not cozying up to the Chinese, but he was trying to appease the Chinese. He was trying to, you know, be friends with them and work something out. <clears throat> and that didn't work. The Chinese saw it as weakness and just took advantage of, of the Philippines. Um, now, Marcos is totally different. He's decided, you know, he can't trust them, and he's decided to strengthen ties with the Americans. And he's done that by, uh, first of all, giving the Americans access to, think, 12 military bases now. Open them back up. The Americans have access to these bases. Um, I believe there's a carrier either here or on its way here. Um, and I think the Secretary of State, that was a Lincoln, Lincoln, he was here just last week. And so now America has strengthened their ties with the Philippines and basically let China know that if you mess with the Philippines, you're messing with America. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We've got kind of a, a sketchy history, America and the Philippines. There was actually an American-Philippine war. I can't remember the exact dates of it, but a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of Filipinos were killed in that war. And, uh, you know, when the Spanish left, we came in and said, we are going to, you know, help you be free. And instead, we tried to colonize the Philippines. But anyway, that's another story. So it'd be nice if uh, we can have stronger relations with the Philippines. Uh, it's very strategically located right here in the South China Sea. So hopefully that's going to happen. But no, I'm not concerned about China. China is a failing state. I don't even think they're gonna, they'll take Taiwan. If they do, they'll, they'll lose. Uh, Tom Smith. Hi, Mark. My Philippine has two plots of land in Camagun. She has to have a little a title search done as they were inherited. Would you know the cost of having that? I had no idea. No, like I said, I'm not involved in all that. Um, go to uh, Greg and Wilma, you know, building the Philippines. Greg knows all about that stuff and send him a message through his channel. He would know about that, but I, I have no idea, none at all. And that's a problem here too, is like you get a piece of land and you know it may have like six or seven people that have claimed to it because these families all have they own a little piece of it and uh, they've all got to agree on the price of selling it then the other problem especially if it's oceanfront is access so I many there's a big piece of land but there's no access to it and the people that own the access want to want a fortune for their for their uh, little piece like a few meters of land so you can draw make a road back there and then what will happen is if um, you do get ha half the neighbors to agree the last guy will find out a foreigner is buying that land on the beach and he'll tell his jack his price up so it's unaffordable and then the sale will fall through. So there's all kinds of stuff going on and the problems with contractors and building houses and just, you know, something I don't want to mess with. And plus, if you're going to build a house, it's a whole year of your life. You've got to be there almost every day supervising. So not for me. Um, Ricky Drama needs an Oscar. I don't understand what that means. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, you know, I'm happy renting, been here for two and a half years. Um, <clears throat> don't see any reason to leave. Got plenty of room here. I love being on the beach. Before the first, um, two and a half years I was living here, I was up in Valencia on the mountain and it was nice up there because I, I could go on my, I had a nice deck there and I could sit out there and, and see the mountain and the weather was cooler up there. But, um, all I can do is look at it. You know, I'm not going to go hike in the mountain or anything. So that was, you know, it was nice to see and the weather was nice. But here, you know, I've got the ocean and I actually go in the ocean every day and I swim every day in the ocean. So, you know, and right now I've got this beautiful, cool breeze coming off 
the sea and, you know, just the, the smell of it, the fragrance of the sea and the flowers. And I just love it down here. Um, <clears throat> who is running the American government right now? Deep state. I have no idea, man. I don't live there. I have no idea. No idea at all. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. You know, I mean, I have no idea. Um, let's see. I already built one house here, but wouldn't do it again. But at least you've got experience. You know, that's the thing. You've got experience doing it, you know. Um, but, yeah, my, my, my friend Greg and, Greg and Wilma that built their house, which is a beautiful home they built up on the mountain in Darwin. Um, you know, Greg's a really intelligent guy. He understood things like the wiring, the plumbing, and the, the, the plans and all that stuff. And if something wasn't right, you know, he could look, walk in and say, oh, well, you know, that window's supposed to be over here. It's supposed to be a little wider than it is. Or, you know, the plumbing's not right where it's going. And he found little things. Even though he had a good contractor, he found things that were wrong. And I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even catch it. I would, it's just beyond my abilities, you know. And so building a house is just something I, I, I don't think I would ever do. Um, let's see. Mr. G, best way in your option to retire there? Um, well, if you can afford it, um, come here, you know, pack lightly, come here and just travel around and see as much of the Philippines as you possibly can. You know, make do some research before you come and look at all the places that interest you and then decide to maybe do Maggette's, what you like. Maybe you might like like BGC, you know, in, the, in uh, Manila where, you know, you've got all the modern conveniences. It's just like being in Miami, but a little bit more expensive. Maybe you like Palawan, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. And so, you know, look around. For me, I didn't have any choice. When I came here, I couldn't afford to move around. I came here, I chose Dumaguete, Negros Oriental, because of Rique's uh, video that he did. Rique's got a, a channel, uh, Life Beyond the Sea, and he did a really good video on Dumaguete and on Valencia and on the apartment complex I ended up living in. And because of that, that's why I chose here. And he was exactly right, everything he said, and I, I, I'm still here. So anyway, you know, do your research if you can. Um, Make sure you've got some cash to bring with you. You know, you know, all know my story, how little I showed up with it. I had no choice. So if you can come here, you know, with a few thousand dollars so that you can, you know, put first month and last month rent down on an apartment, buy yourself some transportation, you know, buy the, the things that you need that maybe your your place doesn't include. Go for a furnished place. Too. Don't buy, don't get it unfurnished and start buying furniture. Just stay, get with some place that's nicely furnished. Um, and then uh, just start socializing, going out to different places and coffee shops and, you know, different places. And just meet as many people as you can. There's clubs here. You can play golf or badminton or hiking, whatever you want to do, scuba diving. And you can meet people, you know, and have like interest to you. And next thing you know, you have a lot of friends. But that's what I would do. Um, the Philippines unplugged. Um, are you on Baby Watch? Yep. Should come in soon. Hope everything is going good for you and Jen. Everything's going great. <clears throat> but yeah, we're on baby watch. Any day now, literally any day now. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, hello from Houston. Uh, kind of a Rottweiler dog in the Philippines. Yeah, there's three of them right here. We got three of them. <laughs> so they're kind of popular here. I know several people that own Rottweilers. Um, they can be gentle, but you got to train them. Um, it's, I'm just not a big fan of dogs in general, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, they poop on things, they piss on things, they chew things up, and they may even bite somebody. Um, there's a lot of dogs in the Philippines. They're everywhere. Stray dogs, especially here in uh, Dumaguete, Bacong. It's, an, it's a problem because they've got stray dogs everywhere. And people think they're doing a kind thing by feeding them, but you feed them and then they're healthy enough to have more puppies. And we see them, like, if I drive from my house to the main highway, which is about a kilometer. I might see 10 dogs on the way, strays just running around. Um, we don't have them on our property because the Rottweilers drive them off. Um, but having a dog like that, I mean, everybody's got a dog here. Um, and I don't know, I mean, a Rottweiler, you know, it's, it's like having a handgun laying around, a loaded handgun. You know, hopefully, you know, it never bites anybody, never gets angry, but ours have caught a dog slipped in through the fence one time and the, our Rottweilers got it. And uh, they were going to rip it apart. It was like, you know, when you see the lions get a hyena, they were going to rip it apart. Fortunately, Jen and I got there in time and were able to save it. But, um, and these aren't our dogs. These belong to the owner. He has somebody actually that lives here 
down below and looks after those dogs. Um, so anyway, um, uh, ba -ba -ba, Nomad Overseas. I guess that might be a YouTube channel. If it is, check out Nomad Overseas. I plan to spend a few months at a time in the Philippines. Uh, must have basically zero brownouts and decent Wi-Fi speed, 30 megs plus. Where would you recommend? Also, it shouldn't be mental expense. Shouldn't be mental expense. I don't know what that means. Um, BGC probably. They don't, you know, power, no power outage is there, you know, high speed internet, you know, it's, there's no dogs running around. It's uh, very modern, very modern. Uh, probably, you know, a third more expensive than Dumaguete or Cebu, but you can get, you know, a high rise, you know, condo with all the amenities, a gym and a pool and, and all that stuff. So probably there. Um, downtown uh, in Dumaguete, the power, there's less power outages. There's not that many here, but it does happen. Um, we have one, you know, every month there's going to be a short power outage. Sometimes it'll be in the middle of the night, power will go out, come back on an hour later. Sometimes they do these planned brownouts, uh, which we haven't had too many of those lately. I guess they're working on the system or whatever. And the, they'll say on Sunday, it's going to be a brownout from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it pretty much is all day long. It's out. We got a generator that they turn on sometimes, but, um, so Yeah. You'd probably be better someplace like that. Cebu also, you'd be okay in Cebu. Cebu also has very few brownouts, except for when a typhoon hits. Eddie, 84 watching, one like, hit the like. Thank you so much, Art Park and Garden. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate sharing your experience. Let's see, Jonathan North. Uh, I want hardwood floors by the ocean with a knocked up. Jonathan, okay, bah, bah, bah. yeah, there's lots of uh, nice places to rent here. Um, my friend, though, Richard, he was telling me that um, he looked at 40 places before he found um, some place to, to live. 40 places, and before he found some some place he likes. So, um, yeah, you have to look around. You know, it can take a while. Um, when I was uh, when I came here. You know, like Dulce Vita, which I lived in, the first place I lived, first apartment complex. Um, <clears throat> they had like four or five apartments available. Now, I think one reason is I mentioned it in my video, and Rike and Paul have mentioned it in their video. And so now everybody goes to Dulce Vita and Big Rock, and so they're usually filled up. But, um, yeah, you have to look around to find a good place. On Facebook Marketplace, you can usually find a lot of them. Um, hey, Gary. Uh, good morning, Mark from Cebu. Hope all is well with uh, Jen. And you take care. Yeah, everything's going great, you know, really doing good. It's so different, too. Now we got a car. we got two motorcycles. We haven't ridden either one of them since we bought the car. Um, i just gotten used to driving the car. I thought it was going to be harder getting around and stuff, but actually it's not. It takes just as much time to get into town, and it's much more comfortable. And I'm not going to ever put Jen on a motorcycle again. You know, the rest of her life, I'm never going to put her on a motorcycle. I'm just not going to take the risk. Um, and her little one, she's got some, she's kind of, um, she's uh, affectionate towards it or whatever, you know. So uh, we might keep that. She could ride it to the Sorry Sorry store, you know, which is on a dirt road right here, but not going to ride it on the street anymore. Um, let's see. Um, is there a nice beach in Dumaguete? In Dumaguete, um, not really. I mean, you can go down to North Point, farther uh, past Dumaguete. And there's some nice beaches down there. But right in the city, whenever you're in the city, you know, there's garbage and stuff floating in there. So, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be in a beach right in Dumaguete. You're better off, you know, in Bakong or Darwin or Zambagitsa if you want to, if you're really into the beaches. Um, good morning. Uh, we'll be retiring in Olmec City next April. Can't wait. Already have a house built. Wow, good for you. No need for us to rent. Thank you. Goodness. Keep up the good work. Yeah, you've already got a house. You're good. It's not, I mean, especially for you younger guys. They're saying your 40s or 50s, you know, maybe you want to consider, and you're married. You know, you definitely got to be married. If you're just living with a girl, you're going to build a house. And I wouldn't do that. Uh, so you're married. You're in a committed relationship, been together for a long time. Maybe you even have a child together. Yeah, I can see buying a house and um, if she's got a place when you're gone. Um, 
But I, what I'm going to do is just, you know, hopefully when I'm gone, Jen can find a place that she wants if she wants to buy a house or maybe she'll continue to rent, you know. Um, it's up to her. But I just don't want to get into that. Uh, Aleva Thompson, hello. Alan retired in the Philippines. My wife now and fiance during COVID, we had a four year LDR and I sent her budgets to buy us a car and build us a house completely furnished, etc., to live comfortably on a thousand monthly pension. Well, I hope it all worked out. I guess it did because you're still together, right? So your wife now so your wife, yeah, that's good for you. Um, that's great. That's great that it all worked out. I know guys where something similar happened and it didn't work out. One guy, one of my subscribers, met a girl online, long distance relationship. He hadn't met her in person and send her all this money during COVID to build a house. She built the house. He finally, COVID's over, he finally goes to see her. Sure enough, there's the house, but also her whole family is living there. He's sleeping on the floor. And after like a week or two, she said, this isn't working out. And he had to leave and he lost everything. So those things happen too. Uh, I'm 62, married for over 10 years. Well, good for you, Rusty. It's nice to hear that. I have so many friends of mine that have been in relationships for a really long time. I know guys that have been married to Filipina for 25, 30 years. Some of them, they met them here. Some of them, they met them in America. And they decided to, uh, to move to the Philippines or retire in the Philippines when they finished working. Uh, Warren, uh, we're getting married to the Philippines in July. Well, congratulations. Barry from Brady Wife Cheaty. Tom Brady Wife cheated on him for three years. Maybe you'll have a new password bro in town. Yeah. I don't know. Um, now the passport bro thing. Basically, that's a term they're using. Uh, uh, African American women are um, using that against African American men that come to the Philippines. Apparently, you know, I did a video on it myself. I think Paul did one recently too. Um, but it's just a term. There's not a lot of African American men over here, at least not where I live. I've met probably ten since I've been here. And I only know of like two that are here right now. Um, but probably more in Cebu or Manila, but it's not a lot of them here. So let's see, I think it's more in Thailand. Thailand's more popular. But I think a lot of guys that I meet that are just passing through, I did a video on this last night. Um, they're spending a few weeks in the Philippines and they go into Thailand. A lot of times, for whatever reason, they like Thailand better. I mean, they like to, it's more of a party town. So if you're looking to have a good time and party, you know, the bars and all that stuff, the girls. There's a lot more of that in Thailand than there is in the Philippines. And then, of course, you know, marijuana is legal over there now. And some guys like that, too. Um, and the, I think the uh, the Internet and stuff like that, the infrastructure is better over there. You get a little nicer apartment for the same amount of money in Thailand that you would in the Philippines. So um, I guess when you compare the two, even though there's, uh, it can be difficult to just live there permanently because the visa situation keeps changing over there. Um, some guys prefer Thailand even after checking out the Philippines. So I think the Philippines has lost a lot of potential retirees um, to the Philippines. Um, castaway couple. Hey, mate, big kudos and thanks to you from, oops. Thanks to you from Australia. You've been a big inspiration in my life to, to my wife. Thank you. And I we're almost finished building our house in Omak, looking to to move next year sometime. Well, good for you. I hope that uh, you make it to Dumaguete sometime. We can meet in person. But yeah, um, a lot of the guys that are building houses, you know, some of them were in uh, construction or um, contractors, you know, back in America. So all this stuff is you know easy for them. But guys that have never built a house, never built anything. You know, I think twice about, you know, jumping in and building a house over here. And you definitely got to get a good contract. You got to get a lawyer. I mean, there's a lot of things you got to do. There's so many permits and stuff you need to get to. It's just, you don't just buy a piece of land and start building on it. I heard they changed some things for the uh, 13A visa. It pays to have someone do it for us. Yeah, I use um, JRC and Dumaguete. They're excellent. You're going to pay a little bit more, but they're excellent. I was just there the other day to do my, after you've been here for, six after you filed everything after six months you file you make a little like 300 peso payment they do some more paperwork and then another six months goes by then i have to go to cebu for an interview and then after that i get five years 
and they're doing all that for me. I went down there the other day and they print everything out for you. They make sure it's all right. Because if there's one mistake on all these papers, and there's a lot of papers, one mistake, they kick it back, you start all over again. And so having a professional agency do it for you, it takes out all the heartache and, you know, all the, because, you know, you're in another country, you don't know how things work. And also, they meet you there. Like when I go to Cebu, they'll be waiting for me, my representative to take me right through. Like I had to do um, the fingerprints and the photo again the other day. And uh, so the girl got in the car with me and Jen. We drove over there and there's like 50 people all waiting in line doing different things at this place. It's right next to the um, LTO where they do driver's licenses thing. And they took me right to the front of the line. I was there not even five minutes but because they've got a special deal with them and everything. So it's definitely worth having, having an agency do it for you. Let's see. Hey, Mark, that a uh, huge living room. You ever have a party and make that a dance floor? We have lots of parties here, lots of them. You know, now that Jen's pregnant, you know, we haven't had as many as we do, usually do. But we had Thanksgiving. We had like 35 people here. We have big round tables and chairs for like 100 people if we need them. Um, we had a big cocktail party at Christmas. Um, we have, you know, barbecues and stuff, you know. Used to have them like at least once a month. We'd have some kind of event. The baby shower. We had over 30 people here for a baby shower, too. So, yeah, that's one thing that I like about this place. And you can just see in a tiny piece of it. There's three bedrooms here, two full baths, a great big balcony overlooking the ocean that we've got, um, you know, a nice kitchen. And we've got, I don't know, that four sofas. There's a little alcove over there. You can't see like a little nook that you can read books in and stuff. So we've got lots and lots of space here, lots of space. Let's see. Um, let's see. Rusty's, what happens after five years? Do it all over again? Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember, uh, Rusty. I think um, you just I think you just pay a small fee, and they just renew it for like another five. They've got like a driver's license or something. They keep renewing it um, every, every five years or whatever. But, I mean, it's easy. Um, the other choice is to do a retirement visa, but then you've got to put a bunch of money in, in a banker that just sits there. You don't even get interest on it. And so I wouldn't want to do that. So, so yeah, it's retirement visa, visa is the other option. It's, it's a little bit cheaper if you're a veteran. You get a special deal if you're a veteran. So, but anyway, it's, you know, it's, it's good. You know, I've never had a problem with immigration here. You, the tourist visa is even, you can do that. I know guys have been here 20 years on a tourist visa. They just keep renewing it. Because every three, after three years, you got to leave the country. But all you got to do is hop on a plane, go to Malaysia or Vietnam or Thailand, get back on the same plane, come back to the Philippines, and boom, they'll give you another, you're good for another three years. You know, so it's so easy. And they don't care if you do that. They have no problem with that at all. Um, let's see. Alan retired in the Philippines. Do you think the exchange rate will go down if the economy increases here in the Philippines? No, I think it'll be the opposite. I think um, I think the dollar is going to go up, <clears throat> which will be good for uh, Americans. Uh, the dollar is, you know, the only strong currency in the world. There's nothing that can compete with it. Not the not the yen, not the euro. Um, and so I think it's going to continue to be the dominant currency for the foreseeable future. And the exchange rate's been great ever since I've been here. Um, Let's see, maybe sometime give us a walk through your place. It's already been done. Go to Alex Kosh, K-O-S-H. Alex did a whole video on my whole place, where I live, the beach, the outside of the house, everything. So you can watch the whole thing over there. <clears throat> Rusty, thank you for everyone. Well, thank you for watching. Babies do like any minute now. Any minute, literally. <laughs> I'm not kidding, any minute. So anyway, but yeah, um, Everything's everything's good. It's gonna, you know, life will be very different once the baby gets here, of course. But uh, also, it's gonna, you know, we can relax again and uh, get settled into, you know, family life and everything. I can start traveling around and doing interviews again. Because right now, I just afraid to leave Jen. I don't want to go all the way into town, especially when I was on my motorcycle or something. And all of a sudden, you know, she goes into labor, and you know, she tries to call me on my phone. I can't answer the phone because I'm driving, or I don't hear it ringing, or whatever. And, so I just didn't want to take that chance. So I've just been staying home. And she doesn't want to go anywhere now either. So it's, you know, for obvious reasons. So we're just kind of sticking home. And so that's why I haven't been doing as many interviews as I normally do. We got some guys that want to be interviewed, but um, 
I want them to come out here to the house, you know, so that way it's nice around here too. It's quiet. There's no distractions or anything. And, uh, but once the baby comes, I'll actually go to other people's houses too. They invite me over to their house to do an interview. I'm happy to do that too. Uh, what kind of vehicle did you get? I got a, a Geely, G-E-E-L-Y, Cool Ray. Chinese car. I get a lot of crap from people about that, but it's one of the best cars I've ever owned. Um, Geely owns uh, Volvo. They own Lotus. Uh, they own part of Aston Martin. They own a uh, percentage of Mercedes Chrysler. Like it's got the same transmission that you see in like a Jeep Cherokee or a Dodge Challenger. And it's got tons of technology on it. Like you, the bang for your buck is amazing because the thing about uh, certain Chinese cars is that um, the Chinese government has been subsidizing these, these auto manufacturers over there so that they can corner the market in different countries. So they're able to sell these cars at cost. And so if you got a comparable car, it'd be two or three times more money with the same technology that's, that my car's got. And the finish, fit, fit and finish is incredible. Five-star safety rating, um, excellent gas mileage, excellent power. I mean, just everything about it. It's got cameras all the way around. If you have an accident, it's recorded everything. Um, all these things tell you what the tire pressure is and how much, what your mileage is, how far it is to empty. I mean, everything. It's really good. Great stereo system, too. So, yeah, really happy with it. Um, let's see. Gold is the strongest currency up $400 on an ounce in the last two weeks. Really? I didn't know that. Wow, $400 an ounce. Well, apparently, there's a lot of gold here in the Philippines. You know, and uh, that's also there's supposed to be a lot of gas and oil here, too. Well, I know it's up that much. Does insurance pay for your wife, child? We have uh, Bill Health, <coughs> which will pay a percentage of it, but we'll pay cash. Um, it's my friend uh, Alex had a baby just recently. I think it cost them around three thousand dollars. We're going to the same hospital. So right around three thousand, uh, which is very inexpensive. And so uh, you can get uh, health insurance here, but it's going to cost you probably $200, $250 a month just for, for me. And then, you know, say you go years and you don't need it, you've wasted all that money. Whereas uh, it's so inexpensive to go to the hospital here. Like I know guys that have <clears throat> had a motorcycle accident, had their lung, collapsed lung or broken leg or whatever, and the whole bill was only like a couple thousand dollars. So most guys just keep a credit card with high, uh, you know, rate on it or high um, limit on it, and they just keep that in their wallet. They use a credit card um, and just pay it off. That's the best way to do it. Um, let's see, Castaway Couple. What's your take on the consumerist lifestyle in the West as opposed to living simply in countries like the Philippines? We're pretty fed up with Western toxicity and chasing off the grid uh, living. You know what? That's a really good good question. Um, that's one thing I noticed when I went back home is you're just bombarded with commercials and advertising. Buy this, buy that. Like, you got a cell phone. It's a great cell phone. Oh, a new one comes out. Better get the new one for $1,000. You know, your car is two years old. You know, trade it in. Um, get this, you know. People over there, they say, what are you going to do on Saturday? Oh, we're going to go to the mall. We're going to go shopping. Hey, you want to go shopping? Well, let's go shopping. And they go shopping for stuff they don't even need. Um, and I'm kind of a minimalist now. Like, you know, we own, we bought a rocking chair yesterday for Jen. So she's got a rocking chair. But all the furniture here, and it's all really good quality furniture, came with this place. Um, I'm going to have some bookshelves built because I've got a lot of books. I want to put my books out. So I'm going to spend money on that. But unless we need it, we don't buy it. And uh, but when we go to the grocery store, we don't look at the prices. If we need chicken, we buy chicken. If we need whatever it is, it is we need to buy it. Um, the car I bought is a really good car, high quality, you know. But that'll probably be the last car I ever buy. And so, um, but we're just not into that whole consumerist thing. Like people don't do that here. They're not. They don't, you know, look at their neighbor and say, "Oh, the neighbor's got a nicer car than them, or got a better whatever." And so they want the same thing. That jealousy of. You know, you want to have what your neighbor's got. That doesn't really exist here. And the advertising, you know, we don't get bombarded with it all because, you know, one, we don't watch hardly any TV. You know, I watch mostly YouTube. Um, 
or we download a movie and watch it, or we download a TV show and watch it. So there's no commercials. Um, they don't have billboards up all over the place. I'm not getting, you know, bombarded with you know messages and phone calls trying to sell me shit. Um, and so yeah, it's uh, I think it's a it's a big mistake in America. Or it's a big problem. It also I hear there's all this credit card debt. That there's like trillions of dollars in America of credit card debt, and so much of it is stuff that people don't even need. Like I found that out myself. Like when I was getting rid of my stuff, I had a storage locker full of things, you know, nice things. A lot of it I bought my ex-wife had bought, but all this stuff. And I go, you know, you can't even give it away. And I said, what if I had the money for all this stuff here? All this stuff it would, instead of this stuff I had the cash I actually spent on it. I you know, I've been have a lot of money. I'd be really well off though. So, you know, just don't buy stuff you don't need. If you don't really need it, don't buy it. You know, we go shopping for something we need. Like, you know, we needed a, a crib for the baby. We went and bought that. We didn't buy anything else we didn't need. So, anyway, yeah, I know what you're talking about. How's the police on fire department if you need them? They are absolutely excellent. I mean, you don't see police out here um, looking for a reason to arrest somebody, looking for a reason to give somebody a ticket. Um, as a matter of fact, the owner of this house, his wife's brother is very high up in the police department here. <clears throat> and they have, um, they've had a couple of parties over here where I got to meet these guys. And they're just really nice guys, you know, and, and the police I've dealt with, sometimes they throw up a roadblock, just making people, make sure they get people got a helmet and a driver's license. But um, they're just, they're nice. They're not confrontational. Like if you get, you don't get pulled over here. There's no cops out running people over. If you see a police car on the road and it's going real slow, you can pass him and he's not going to pull you over. Um, they're not looking to arrest anybody here. The fire department, there's hardly any fires here, I guess, because we're in the tropics. But um, there is a fire department here. There are fire trucks. I've seen them. I think I've seen them on the road like once or twice in five years um, going to a fire, I assume. A lot of ambulances here. Now, the ambulances here... Um, are not like the ambulances in America. Like I've been in an ambulance in America when I had my, my bypass surgery, and it's like an ER in there. They've got all this equipment and monitors and IVs and, and all this stuff. Here it's just basically kind of like you see in MASH, you know, in the TV show. It's like a paddy wagon with a, a bench in the back, and they throw you in there and take you to the hospital. But there's really not any EMTs and stuff here, at least not in Dumaguete. So, yeah, that's that's one thing. But, um, no, they're great. They really are. I mean. Uh, and you have a lot of security officers here, too. It's a big thing. I guess because labor so cheap. You go to 7-Eleven, there's a security officer at the door. And he's, I guess he's there to make sure nobody steals anything. But also, they open the door for you, say good morning, good afternoon. Uh, if you're parking your car, they help you park your car. You're trying to back your car out into the street. They go out there and stop the traffic so you can get out. And it's great. And you give them, like, 20 paces, which is, like, 40 cents, or five paces, which is 10 cents. You know, and it's great. So, I mean. I have nothing but good thing to say about the police here. Uh, was it news? Um, Steve, I got married in March. I'm 73 and my wife is 64. I want to put my wife down as my beneficiary on my SS. My previous wife died in July 22. A woman from embassy said I have to wait a year. Sound correct? Um, I didn't. I'm not sure how that works. Um, I've heard different things. I heard that you had to be married for um, 10 years and live in America for five years together for your wife to uh, get your Social Security if she's not an American citizen. Um, but that, don't count me on. That's just something I heard. Um, with Jen, um, we'll be getting her, uh, they call it a 10. It's an ID number. Because right now I can't even write her off on my taxes. To the, as a dependent, you have to have a, have this ID number for her. And um, apparently, when baby's born, she'll get it. It'll come to me, but I'm going to put it in her name. She'll get like a little bump in my Social Security. It's like 50% more, and that money will go directly to Jen until the, the child is 18 years old, then it cuts off. Um, but if I have it sent directly to her, that way if I die, it doesn't stop. It keeps going. But if it comes to me, and I die. Then she has to sort it all out with Social Security and start all over again. So that's the way to do that. Um, I really don't know because as far as I know, um, when I pass away, 
And Jen is, she has to wait until she's 62 or 65, whatever the age is going to be when she's that old. And then she would be able to collect, you know, my social security, but I'm not sure about that. You have to research that because they keep changing stuff on that. And so we're not counting on social security at all for anything, you know, and it'll be nice getting the, the bump when the baby comes, but we're not counting on it. By the way, people think, oh, wow, your social security goes up 50% when you have a child. So I'm going to have five kids. It doesn't work that way. It's one bump. You have four kids over here. You don't get another increase. You just get one increase for, you know, for, for how many, no matter how many kids you have. And then you have to fill out also, we have to fill out a, a foreign born form and we got to go to the embassy and it's all a bunch of hoops you got to jump through to get that. It can take months and months to get it too. It's not automatic. Nomad overseas. I have serious doubts about both the U.S. and Chinese economies. U.S. dollar may not be quite as safe as you think. But the, the thing about it is, is there's no, there's no alternative. There's really no alternative. So that's what the dollar's got going for it. You know, nobody's going to take their yen or the ruble over the dollar. Um, I've traveled around the world, and I'll tell you something. I can't tell you how many countries I've been to where I could spend a dollar in a foreign country. You know, and they say, oh, I've got to sell it. I'll take it. And that's true. I, I used that in Russia. I used to spend dollars in Russia. So um, I don't know. You know, we'll see. You know, I'm not, I'm not an economist, so I can't argue with you over that. I mean, um, I don't live in America. Um, I'll never live in America again, but not because I've got anything against America. It's just because I have such a great life here. Um, and I think America's going to be just fine. I really do. I mean, America's got everything. You've got farmland. You've got oil. You've got natural resources. You've got a labor force. Um, even with all these immigrants that are coming in or refugees, you know, hopefully there'll, there'll be jobs. There's jobs for all of them. If they want to work, there's jobs for every one of them. There'll be jobs left over which you don't have in other countries. So, you know, hopefully things will be good. I'm an optimist when it comes to America. Ah. Uh, I have no idea who Ricky Drama is. Never heard of him. Uh, the Castaway Couple. Yeah, I fell in a similar uh, trap and noticed my hunger for more was killing us. I'm only 30 and wife's 35, but we're determined to find a way to make life, uh, make a life no matter what it takes. It sounds crazy. Yeah. Um, my advice is just buy quality. You know, if you want that new iPhone, then fine. Go ahead and get that new iPhone. Get the best deal you can. Wait till the, if you like that particular one, wait till the new one comes out. Then buy, the, buy that one that you wanted. You know, wait until it's not the new one anymore. It'll be cheaper. And then take care of it. Keep it until it breaks. My phone I've got right now that I'm making this video on, it's like three years old now. I've dropped it back if it's cracked with the screen. The front's fine. And I paid $600 for it. And I've made thousands of dollars with it using making YouTube videos. Um, I got a quality car. I'll take good care of it. My last car I had was an Infiniti FX45. Went back when I was making lots of money. That car was over $50,000. But when I got rid of it and sold it, it looked like it could roll off the showroom floor. When I wasn't, when I was on ships, I kept it in a garage on a trickle charger, and it was in perfect condition. Everything worked on it. Um, so just buy quality and take care of it. You know, whatever it is. You know, if you um, find a pair, especially if you're coming over here, and you got a pair of shoes you like. You know, buy two pairs. You know, or shorts. You know, buy two. But um, yeah, just you know, you have to get to you have to be happy with what you've got. Enjoy the things you got. You don't need more. You don't need more of stuff. You know, let's see. You're right about credit card debt. The ax is going to fall. Yeah, the, God, the interest rates are crazy. What, like 27% interest on credit cards? You know, you can <clears throat> end up paying two or three times more than whatever it was, you know, cost that you're buying. Like you bought it on sale, but you bought it with a credit card, so you're going to pay double the value of it if you take your time paying it off. What do you think will be U.S. dollar to Philippine this year? I don't know, man. That's beyond my economic abilities. You know, I, I couldn't tell you. You know, I just kind of, uh, as a rule of thumb, I kind of go 50 pesos to the dollar, even though it's it's more than that. I just kind of, that's how I do the math. If I'm looking to buy something and say it's 1,000 pesos, I look at it at 20 bucks. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what I look at. But I'm not, 
I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. The castaway couple, I figure if I have uh, no mortgage or rent, we got water tanks and solar with uh, batteries, no bills except for some food and fuel. Easier than paying $800 a week mortgage in Australia for 25 years. $800 a week? Wow. <clears throat> yeah, um, this house that I did a video on, Alex Kosh did a video on it. $4 million house, not far from here. I interviewed the, own, the owner of it. Anyway, he put in a solar system on this house. And this is a perfect place to have solar in the Philippines. We're right, right on the equator. Anyway, now um, he's got excess power. I mean, air conditioning, this is a huge place. Swimming pool, lights outside, lights on his driveway, all of it for free because of solar. And he's got extra that he's putting back in the grid. And so, yeah, you can, uh, you can build a house here uh, with solar where it kind of runs everything. Because electricity is expensive here. I'm paying like $60 a month for electricity, and we only use like AC in the bedroom at night. We've got fans going and, you know, TV every once in a while, and that's it. It's still $60 for just AC in one room. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah, everything's going good, you know. Got, um, I don't think I'll be going back to America for a while, though, especially with a baby. People ask me all the time, when are you going to go back? I don't know. I mean, it's just so expensive, and it takes so long. Traveling with a child is such a pain. Uh, let's see, the castaway couple. Wait, I'm going to make some missing comments here. Uh, good day, everyone. Hi, Lord. Hello, uh, castaway couple. Just need to find a way to earn a tiny amount uh, for the basic living in the Philippines, but we're set on living in the Philippines with less. Really love your content too. Thanks so much. Yeah, man, there's, you know, this didn't exist, you know, when I was younger. Um, you got the internet now, and there's so many ways you can make money online. I, I know guys that are making ten, fifteen thousand a month online, doing different things. Um, like me, you know, I was teaching English for a while, making two hundred dollars a week, cash money, wired to me every Monday. Um, it was great, you know, just chatting with people online, not even teaching English, just, you know, they practice their English with me. And uh, there's so many things you can do if you just do some research. Go on YouTube. There's a thousand videos on how to make money online. Find something that works for you. If you're going to be coming out here and you're going to count on making some money online while you're here, try it out in America or home first. See how much you're making, how steady it is, and then, you know, come out here. But test it out before you come. Don't come out here thinking, Oh, I'm going to do this, you know, when I get there and you find out that it, it doesn't pay as much or maybe they won't even let you do it if you're living in another country. But, yeah, there's lots of ways to make money online and, you know, part time. You can easily find a way to make $200 a week. No problem. The American Vagabond. Um, I lived in Southeast Asia for six months, including the Philippines. It was awesome. But proximity and other factors uh, chose Colombia. Yeah. Well, Colombia is so much closer to America. And the same with Mexico, you know, way closer. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I see your point. Uh, I lived in Mexico for a year. Loved it down there, but I don't speak Spanish. Because um, Mexico is really nice. Do you need a fishing license? That's a really good question. No, you don't. As far as I know, I see guys fishing by my house every day. I see them out there in little canoes fishing. Sometimes they use a net. Sometimes they're using a line. But, um, no, I don't think you do. Let's see, Brandon, how has Dumaguete changed over the years? Is it still a good place to settle down? That's a good question. I've been here for five years, so I guess I'm qualified to answer that question. I think it's gotten better. For example, um, the highway that I live off of here, it was just an asphalt road with a lot of potholes in it. Now it's a beautiful four-lane highway with the cat size and, and lot stripe and the lines on it and everything, and just a really nice road, lots of new roads. Lots of roads that were in bad condition have been repaired. Um, lots of new businesses opening up here. Um, I just think it's gotten better. It's gotten better in every way, you know, and uh, I see constantly improvements coming. You know, So, yeah, it's gotten better, in my opinion. And I don't think it's crowded either. Like, a lot of guys will say, well, there's too many foreigners there. There really isn't. You know, there's not that many guys here. You can go to the mall and walk around and maybe see one foreigner sometimes. Sometimes you go someplace there's like four or five, but they're not, we're not, we haven't overtaken this place. It's Filipinos are here. And they're, um, 
you know, so yeah, it's, it's, I'd love it here. I think it's great. And Mark, hello from Melbourne, Australia. I've been to Melbourne many times. I used to work on cruise ships, been to Melbourne. I sailed all the way around Australia, all the way around New Zealand, uh, been to Tasmania, Cook Islands, all over that part of the world. Love Australia. A lot of Australians here, as a matter of fact, quite a few. This, this house that I live in is owned by an Australian. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Mark, how much would it be? How much would what be? You talking about rent or what? I don't understand what you're asking about. How much would it be? Um, I don't know. Um, Barry, in Mexico during Holy Week, things are kind of shut down. Is the same with, yeah, it is. They, uh, they have all these fests, and they call them fiestas. And uh, they'll play loud music and shut down roads, and people set up little stands on the side of the road. So, yeah, they have a lot of those. And Christmas here lasts for like three months. But you'll never see a Santa Claus anywhere. Yeah, so yeah, they're big on the uh, fiestas here. Um, so yeah, um, let's see, anything else? Any more comments here? Neil, I don't, you have to give me a little more information on what you're, you said, how much for what, how much would it be? How much, what would it be? Happy to answer your questions. Tell me what, what you mean there. Uh, but yeah, rents, I think rents are going up a little bit. I know guys have just rented apartments here and they're paying probably, 10 to 20 percent more than it was a few years ago but that's you know that's expected i mean it's been five years um i think where i lived in big rock i was twenty thousand pesos a month when i lived there now here it's 21. i'm not sure about dulce vita but yeah so things are going up a little bit you know but that's to be expected so anyways any other comments here or should i wrap it up we've been on here for 51 minutes any more comments? Looks like we're done here, guys. Thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you share my videos, your friends really appreciate it. I'll start doing more interviews as soon as the baby's born here. Um, I had somebody who coming out today, but he, he got sick, couldn't make it. Um, boy, here we go. Um, what's the overall inflation rate in the Philippines? What is the currency? The Philippines, well, the currency is the Philippine peso. I can't tell you what the what the um, inflation rate is. I have no idea. I have no idea. Greetings. If you're funded by Aussie dollars, that's a big hit. Okay, I guess I guess the Australian dollar has gone down. Cashly Keppel, what would you say was the key to your success on YouTube? Like, did you have a strategy, or you just posted? That's a really good question. Um, well, you have to find a niche. And my niche was that I noticed that you see celebrities and famous people, athletes and whatever, being interviewed on all these different channels and talk shows. And they're all telling the same story over and over on every show. And I started thinking, you know what, the average guy, you know, senior citizen like me, they have stories. They have an interesting life that maybe that guy sitting over there, you know, that's 65 years old, has got a way better story than any movie star does. And so I just started interviewing regular guys. That was the whole premise of my channel. Every man has a story. And it just kind of took off. And then I've got to get a lot of credit to my friend, uh, Paul McGill, Old Dog New Tricks. Paul um, helped. He showed me how to set up a YouTube channel. He promoted me on his YouTube channel. And he was kind of like my mentor for the first couple of years. So uh, he had a lot to do with it, a lot to do with it. And it just kind of took off. And, it's, and you know, I've got 65,000 subscribers now. On YouTube, a lot of guys say they're going to do the same thing. It's tough, man. It's tough to get a channel going on YouTube. Um, there are over 142 million YouTube channels. Out of those, only 2% have more than 10,000 subscribers. Give you some idea how tough it is to, you know, to find a niche and then get some traction. And you have to have to make, uh, you got to treat it like a business. That's what I do. You know, I literally treat it like a business. I try and put out content every week. If I don't have someone to interview, I do a live stream. If I don't have a do a live stream, I do what I call a talking head, where I come up with a subject and just talk about it. But yeah, it's it's not as easy as you think, but once you get it going, it's really a great little, I really enjoy it, I love it a lot. I did, I did talk radio for a while, and this is way better than talk radio, because with, uh, at least with YouTube, like right now I know there's 145 people watching. When I was doing talk radio on a Sunday night, eight to 10, you didn't know there's anybody listening at all. It was AM, might've been zero, you don't even know. And you're hoping people will call in with questions, you know. 
Top G Mindset Coach. Okay, check out Top G Mindset Coach's YouTube channel. Hey, Mark. Happy Palm Sunday from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Blessings to you and Jen. Enjoy your baby. Best of love. Well, thank you. Very nice of you. I didn't know it was holiday today. I didn't know. I didn't know. It's Palm. Happy Palm Sunday. It's not Palm, not Sunday yet. So I guess next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Uh, Kemp, good show. Castaway. That's awesome. Yeah, I love Paul's channel. Really intelligent guy too. Thanks for answering that. You're welcome. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up now. Thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, ice cream man good morning mark from oregon i love oregon hope all is well uh every time i gotta wrap up you guys shoot in a bunch of comments i think you're a good interviewer you ask good questions on your guests and you get talent for it well thank you so much i appreciate that i get a lot of sl flack people say you talk too much that i should let them talk more but it's sometimes it's really not so much an interview it's just a conversation between two guys that just met and so you know you talk about fishing and I talk about fishing and we go back and forth, you know, and, and share, you know, our lives together. So sometimes I, I'm redundant. I tell stories I've already told before because I, this guy hasn't heard it that I'm just met. And I'm trying to create a rapport with him. But anyway, um, Jimmy Masters. Hey, Mark, do you think uh, the dating scene for foreigners has changed since you first arrived? Nope. The same. So many nice, nice ladies here. Uh, Joe McGrath, good to see you again. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. My voice is starting to go here. Got to go look after my wife. Thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you want to be on the show, send me an email. Go to more on my description of any video. You'll see my email address down by my PayPal, MarkFThorntonYahoo.com. Send me an email. If you're going to be in Dumaguete, we'll get together and do an interview. Uh, so talk to you later. Thank you for watching. Bye. Ugh. <sighs>